and welcome to my gaming video on the Galaxy Tab S9 FE Plus. Yes, this one is something you should pay attention to. It's very different in terms of specs compared to the regular Tab S9. So what do we have? Now we know this device starts at $449, much cheaper for a Tab S device. So that's good to see. Specs, what do we get? We get a 12.4 inch display, 90 Hertz res uh, refresh rate. We have a resolution of 1600 by 2560 here. And this is an IPS LCD panel and not an OLED panel. So it definitely looks different, but still vibrant. Those images of Ichigo look really good. Wallpaper guys, I'll have them for you. Now, what about the processor in here? That is one of the main things. This is running an Exynos 1380 processor. Yes, and it comes with either eight or 12 gigabytes of RAM, 128 up to, or up to 256. But here's the caveat. You can expand that with micro SD uh, up to one terabyte. And I put in a 512 gigabyte micro SD card into this bad boy, which is great. Now, I like that because some apps will let you download directly to the SD card, some will not. So it just all depends, but at least it's good enough for your storage, especially if you get the 128 gigabyte version of this device. Now you've got Wi-Fi 6 on here, which is great to see, and Bluetooth 5.3, so good connectivity for your controllers, like your Xbox controller while you're gaming. In terms of uh, battery, looking at a 10,000, a uh, 90 milliamp battery and it's 45 watts wire charging. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the benchmarks first before we get into some of our gameplay. So we're looking at Geekbench 6 and our single core benchmarks are 995. I haven't seen that in a while. So this is definitely a mid-tier device and you should bear that in mind while you're gaming. Multi-core 2,817. When we look at GPU stats, we're looking at 2,995 here. So very different in terms of stats here for gaming, but Still though, it feels like this device should be able to do some quality gaming for us. So let's take a look at some of the games we like to play. Call of Duty is a game we like to play and we can you can see our settings here. We have uh, low max. It's not the highest settings possible, but it allows us to get some really smooth gameplay on the air while gaming 60 frames per second, very solid all the way through. You have no slowdowns anyway at all. Then moving over to PUBG Mobile. Now you can see PUBG Mobile, not a lot of settings are available. Again, this Exynos processor isn't something that is built for high level gaming. And you can see here clearly where we're getting 30 frames per second on our settings here with HD, still good, plays well. Of course, I died quite a bit, so you get the idea of what this thing can actually do. Now, before we go ahead to Genshin Impact, let's listen to some audio off the uh, the speakers here. We've got dual speakers on each side of this device. So let's see what we get in terms of just the gaming audio and as well as also music off the system. Be advised, hostile sentry got spotted. Changing mag. Okay, that was pretty good and pretty solid overall. Now, what about Genshin Impact? Now, Genshin, I did try to run it at its max setting, 60 frames per second, and trust me, don't even try that. It dropped down to 30 frames here, as you can see with our Geek Benchmark scores for this device. So it's best to play, play it actually at low settings, uh, 30 frames per second, and it runs well. This is not a device built for that and you will not get that kind of performance. Now, because of, of course, it running at low uh, settings for pretty much most of the games here, what we actually get in terms of temperatures is our standard. It doesn't heat up at all, uh, unless of course you're trying to max out Genshin, which I just had to stop, but temperatures stayed relatively cool all the way through my gameplay session. So that's something to definitely take note with the device. Now, of course, this is a device that I think cloud gaming will benefit the most from, especially with the Wi-Fi 6 uh, connectivity and also Bluetooth 5.3. Able to connect my Xbox controller, jump into Xbox Game Pass, and definitely jump in and start playing some games. Now, of course, Forza Horizon uh, 5 was great to play. I wish I could play Forza Motorsports. Not yet, but game played well. 
as long as you have good connectivity, you can actually enjoy that gaming session. Plus, I was able to use the same controller and enjoy gameplay on Call of Duty Mobile. So that was actually great to see. Now, watching video and content on here is great. You have good real estate. Uh, the brightness is actually relatively decent on this device and the S Pen comes in clutch. I do like the fact that it comes with an S Pen. So you've got all those S Pen abilities like the air commands and things like that, functionality all around the device. Uh, plus, you do have the ability to write into spaces where you have to type. So if you're using the pen for anything, this will work well. And the pen feels very comfortable in the hands. Plus, it does uh, connect at the back to charge. Um, so that's also a plus here. Now, I don't have the case for this device, but I have to say that when you look at it as a gaming device, this is not meant to be that, but what this is is meant to be an entertainment companion to do some light gaming. And if you're watching movies and content, this will do the job for you. And if you want to just jump into a quick gameplay, especially card gaming, then the Tab S9 FE Plus is the device for you. So what do you guys think about it? Do you think this is worth picking up? Do you like the fact it's got that ex uh, expansion with microSD? Leave your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.